Hello, hello, everyone. My name is Julian. I'm a customer success agent here at Expression, And we also have Lisa as a speaker today. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm an account executive here at Expression. Yes, and before we start, uh, I would like to introduce Expression to those who are new here. So Uexpressia is an online platform that helps to build customer journey maps, persona profiles, and impact maps. You'll get familiar with the Uexpressia platform today as we'll use it as an example for our uh, tips and tricks. However, feel free to use any other platform as all the advice we're going to share are relevant to any other tool. Besides Uexpressia platform, we also have Uexpressia Academy, an online educational platform with different courses on mapping related topics. And we also love holding events, as you probably noticed. It helps us to connect with our audience, with you, and to hear your feedback. So with that, uh, let's start our today's session. In the previous event, those of you who attended the previous event, they uh, know that we talked about the uh, base layer of any collaborative journey mapping initiative, which is planning. We talked about the goals that should be set prior to launching the initiative, the roles and how to distribute them among the participants, the importance of facilitation and different timeline options. We also talked about how to be strategic in your prep steps and try and foresee the whole process, not just immediate next steps. Today, we are going to talk about synchronous collaboration. And by synchronous, we mean collaborating together with your team members at the same time. Synchronous collaboration can um, happen either in one physical space uh, for instance, if you are having this uh, workshop for journey mapping in your office, it also can be an online session or mixed type of uh, collaboration. This type of collaboration can be called workshop or a joint strategic, strategic session, but um, let's, uh, for the ease of naming, let's call it a session today. So synchronous collaboration can uh, have pros and, uh, and cons, uh, obviously. The most, um, the biggest plus uh, of such collaboration is that it helps to avoid miscommunication in your team because you can clarify everything on the go. Also, it helps to get everyone out of their everyday tasks and focus on something strategic altogether. Uh, besides, for you as a facilitator, it might be um, more convenient uh, to uh, see, like, to uh, see where your group is heading, uh, and check the quality of their in input, and maybe uh, like guide them towards better results in the process. And last but not least, when it works, it just feels good. It creates a greater sense of belonging in the team. However, there are some minuses as well. For instance, it's quite challenging to schedule shared times as all of the team members might have their own tasks planned. And uh, it's more tiring and time consuming than doing it by, uh, by your own, so separately. And uh, also, if some part of the team cannot join, it could create a sense of frustration and feel like exclusion from the conversation. At the end, it's up to you to decide whether to whether it works for you or not. And you can decide it based on the resources that you have and goals. So let's talk about the letter. Um, yeah, at the heart of any collaboration, of any initiative, basically, always lies the goal. And uh, there are usually two use cases for, uh, collaborate, for synchronous collaboration and journey mapping. And this uh, would be mapping, mapping scenario, and ideation scenario. Uh, in the mapping scenario, the goal is to get information from people and literally put it uh, on the map. And uh, in the ideation scenario, the goal would be to 
familiarize your team with a completed map and generate ideas based on it. Each of these goals require a different toolkit. So here also there is one uh, common mistake that many teams are making, not checking whether you and your team members, the, uh, your colleagues understand this goal the same way. So make sure to be on the same page before starting collaboration um, to avoid frustration. In our today's session, we are going to focus on the mapping scenario, but we'll also touch the ideation uh, part as well, as we believe that this is a really um, big and important part of the whole journey mapping initiative. Whether you are in a mapping mode or you're in ideation mode, there's two useful concepts we suggest keeping in mind while planning your uh, journey mapping sessions. So it's double diamond and point of agreement. Um, so let's just quickly take, uh, take a look at these two. The double diamond is a pretty famous design thinking concept introduced by um, British Design Council that helps you understand your customer and their problems and explore creative ways of how you can solve those. With Double Diamond, you approach uh, problems and solutions by using two different types of thinking. It's divergent and convergent. Divergent thinking means to think broadly, so keeping an open mind and considering anything and everything. And convergent thinking is the opposite, more focused thinking, narrowing um, the number of options and identifying only one or two key points, uh, key problems and solutions. Understanding these two concepts and two modes of thinking and being able to smoothly switch between them during your journey mapping session can really contribute a lot to, to the session success. Another uh, useful concept is uh, points of agreement. And um, the concept is from um, Meeting Designed, the book written by uh, Kevin M. Hoffman. And the idea behind it is pretty simple. The more people you have in the room, the more time you need to agree on anything. So there is, uh, because there's more of those points of agreement. Thinking of this, you might need to uh, consider and adjust the group size uh, for your sessions to make sure that the timing works for them and there's still room for creativity. So let's actually talk about the group sizes because, you know, you can really play with it in order to uh, increase the overall efficiency of your team. And depending on your goal, whether it's generating ideas, discussing them, or sharing the, the results, um, the group size really varies. So another question to the audience uh, would be, if you had a team of 10, how many people would you actually have in the group in order to generate ideas? As I mentioned earlier, there is no right or wrong answer to this question. And this is how we usually approach the expression, dividing into different groups, depending on the um, session's purpose and the goal. So to generate ideas, we suggest sticking to uh, working in pairs, because if a group is bigger than two or like maximum three people, there is always someone who is too shy to speak. A small group ensures that both of the participants are contributing to uh, the ideation, and this way you're able to gather more um, ideas overall. So when you already have a list of your ideas and uh, you can start discussing them and developing a plan, um, we suggest having a little bigger groups. So three or four people will be sufficient enough in this case. You need, because you need a little more opinions to get the conversation started, yet still you need some, that space for everybody to be able to speak up. And sharing and finalizing assumes that most of the work is already done and you're just now coming in and telling everybody what you could come up with. So um, you want to make sure that you have everybody in the same room. So you were definitely right with your guesses. And uh, well, uh, depending on us, uh, I mean, in our opinion, but uh, yes, also um, if 
uh, if there is also one of the people uh, out of 10 who decides to share something else um, and has one of the questions, for example, or have we evaluated all of the risks and um, that person is able to have is able to have that opportunities to raise the hand and speak up in front of everybody and this way you're actually able to gather more points for further improvement um, at our previous event we also mentioned that in the core of any collaborative activity lies facilitation Surely the group can be effective without it, yet it really helps to have somebody who is able to gather the process, ask questions, and just making sure overall the agenda is met. Facilitation is not easy. So let us share some tips that our team found useful over the years by collaborating ourselves and learning how our clients work with their teams. And, you know, um, a lots of lots of collaboration these days happen in remote setting. So we'll focus today on facilitation and online training app session. Things to remember. So what can go wrong and while hosting an online session? And the go-to answer is literally everything, from not having enough time to cats flying in the back. We don't have the exact answer for the latter, but we can certainly help you with some of the things that could possibly go wrong. For example, access issues or timing going awry or unclear expectations. Let's take a look at the map we built today at Expressia as an example uh, for today and see how we can mitigate those risks. Julia? Yeah. So access issues. We've all been there. You click the link, it does not work. Or you have the viewer access instead of the editor's ones. So make sure to sort it all out before starting collaboration and make sure that everyone involved in the mapping process has the needed access. So let me uh, share uh, how we at Uexpressia deal with such possible issues. Uh, yeah, so the easiest way to share the projects um, at your expression with your team members is to enable direct link access. You can uh, specify the permissions your audience will have, viewers or editors, and you can also protect your link with password if needed. Uh, besides, you can check who's currently online from your team members simply by opening up the map and checking this right side corner right here. Besides that, you also can see who's currently editing the map. For instance, I can see that my colleague Tanya is now uh, editing this cell. And as you can see, I cannot type anything here as the platform prevents uh, the uh, self, the content from being overwriting. So it's uh, convenient while you uh, collaborate syn synchronously. Another thing to remember here is that online discussions take more time. So make sure to allocate more time as people in an online setting cannot quite discuss things the same way as they do it uh, while they're gathered at one table. What also takes quite some time is um, our, actually, our calls and discussions in between, in between your sessions. But who said that all of your journey mapping discussions must also happen synchronously? You can leave it for later and then get back to it after the main collaborative session. So let me show you how to do this. Um, at your expression, uh, we have the commenting mode. And now I want to ping my colleague Tanya and ask her to add KPIs here. So I'm switching to the commenting mode, ping the comment, and I'll mention Tanya and ask her to add KPIs. This is actually a frequent case so when team members are collaborating uh, all together and then someone needs to add some data 
accurate numbers, but they don't have them at hand. At hand. So in this case, instead of wasting your time for searching for this data or even counting it, uh, live, you better leave it as a homework and then simply get back to it after the session. You can ping your colleagues to remind them to do this. By the way, if you don't like um, to uh, type the comment, if it's too much to type, you can also uh, add this audio comment and brief your team members in on the project this simple way. Uh, another thing to remember here is that online, that uh, tasks, uh, task descriptions and framing questions works best. So it makes sense to add uh, some examples for your team members on how to fill in the map and guide them on what to expect as well. So we added this first column in our map with tips for workshop participants, as you can see. Uh, this uh, column uh, includes just tips. Uh, we noticed that some teams like to write one word goals here, like satisfaction. But what does it mean? It's, it's not so clear. So we decided to add these verbs. It's better to add something as a prop um, and to improve satisfaction is already more refined goal. So make, uh, feel free to, um, to play with those phrasings to, and see how your group, uh, how it affects your group and uh, their activity, their efficiency. Also, what uh, works good uh, is to use open-ended questions while adding those tips and navigating your uh, group. As your goal here is to get as much insights from your team members as possible. So feel free to use these open-ended questions instead of yes or no uh, questions like, for instance, uh, instead of asking, uh, did you find a solution to this issue? It's better to ask, how will you solve this issue? Or what is the solution to this, to this customer experience issue? So this also can be added either in this first column of your map, or you can also use tool tips. Once you hover over this section uh, name, you can add those tool tips and um, uh, add this guidance for your team members on how to fill in the map. So yes, we talked uh, today, we uh, talked about um, what can possibly go wrong, uh, but uh, that's not all. Uh, actually, uh, much more things can go wrong. And there are uh, usually generally good advice uh, for your collaborative uh, journey mapping sessions that you might want to keep in mind as well. The very first one is session expectations. Uh, it's quite important to let others know, your team members know in advance what to expect at the end of the session. What is expected result? As people might expect to have a finished map till the end of the session, while it's rarely the case, let's be honest. So they get really upset when at the end of this workshop session, they, uh, ma they manage to do just a tiny bit of work and they get a huge homework after. Make sure to address this beforehand in order to prevent discouragement in your team. Another thing is timing. Synchronous collaboration cannot go on and on for ages. It's a limited time of activity. So uh, make sure that you plan your session accordingly and set the bare uh, minimum that you have to reach no matter what. Imagine uh, that your timing went completely off the rails. So what is it you need to do? Uh, no, what, what is it you, you need to do no matter what? This would be your minimum acceptable result. Also, uh, you should keep in mind that uh, you need to have breaks every hour or so, especially if your session uh, is more than one and a half hours. And also make sure to have some buffer time in case things do go awry. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, to have a co-facilitator. 
if possible, it's better to have someone to give you a hand throughout the session as wearing many hats at once might be quite challenging. You'll be checking if you are fitting into timing, you'll be checking if uh, you're meeting the agenda of the session, answering the questions your team members are having, maybe even splitting up people into breakout rooms if you use Zoom for this session. So lots of things. And it's always to, it's good to have someone to give you uh, a hand and not to be overwhelmed in the middle of the session, uh, in the middle of this workshop. And last here is uh, break the ice. So it's a good practice to sync with your team members before the session and uh, check how their mood is. Uh, as you all came from another context right now. So you can just check uh, what's their mood. Uh, maybe they had some tough meeting before. So this will help you to uh, guide the session accordingly. You know that they're a little bit tired and so on, just to give you more clear understanding of the current uh, mental state, emotional state of your group. But uh, keep in mind that such activities are not for everyone. So it's okay to adjust them or eliminate them depending on your team. Um, yeah, thanks, Julia. Uh, we talked about timing a lot up until this point, and you might be wondering, so how to actually set up the collaboration for success and get things done. And the truth is the timing is ruthless. And in most cases, you will not do the whole journey mapping exercise all at once. So you need to plan ahead and decide what you're going to leave for homework and who is going to actually do the homework. Keeping that in mind, uh, you can play with session scope. An example we have over here, you can see that we only map together while other activities, the ones that are prior, like setting up objectives, defining personas and mapping the skeleton, and then action planning afterwards are left for homework. And depending on your goal, you can adjust the scope accordingly. You can not only play with the scope, but also with a session's duration. Um, here is an option. Uh, here are the options that work for us at your expression, and we like recommending others for their sessions as well. Um, this can be four bigger sessions of four hours each, with one or two weeks in uh, in between for research, or you can split them. To shorter, um, to shorter sessions of one and a half or two hours each. Of course, you don't want to wear your team out, so it is important to take breaks every hour. It's commonly overlooked, but it actually has really great impact on team's productivity. And we also have some examples of different types of journey mapping sessions um, that we have prepared for you. And we will share those with you later um, in the post event email. Thinking of journey stages uh, is the toughest task to do for people, especially with those who have no or limited experience in mapping and usually it takes them even three times longer and is incredibly frustrating. So to ease the tension and save time, you can prepare a map skeleton in advance as homework by yourself or in a smaller group. Or you can even assign somebody else, your team member to do it, be it your call facilitator or initiated lead. While it, may, well, uh, it might feel like too important of a task to do without everybody being involved, in practice if needed, uh, the template can be easily adjusted during the session while creating it from scratch on the fly is really time consuming and once again, frustrating. Then once you start working on the map together, it becomes very clear of, you know, um, if it needs some extra swim lanes to capture more important details or in the contrary, uh, some of the parts are unnecessary and they just need to be cut out. Um, instead of building a map, from scratch, uh, we suggest to do expression using templates. They can um, they can really help you get started with your uh, with your journey. And also, some of the pre filled section might give you a good idea of how you can approach your own. 
Um, if, you, if you need more guidance on uh, which stages to add to the map or you need more framing questions, uh, consider using our free journey mapping cheat cards. Uh, we've created them for different teams and individuals to help them work with, um, with maps, generate ideas, and look at the existing ones from a different angles. As we always say, uh, journey mapping is a journey. So don't forget to treat it as one and design uh, the interactions accordingly to ensure a great experience. And you can do so by following these. One step at a time means really to keep it simple and do not overwhelm people with multiple tasks all at once. If you run after two hairs, you will catch neither. And the same principle applies here. And the second um, advice to you is minimize switching between screens. So try to put everything people might need for the mapping ex uh, activity right in front of you uh, on the map or right next to it. Yeah, for instance, what you can do, you can, um, upload relevant photos and images um, either right in the map or in the um, team library. So let me show you how it looks, what it looks like at your expression. So yes, you can either do this um, right from your computer and upload it um, here every time you need the same um, image or the same document, you'll have to upload it from your computer or just upload it once and for all in our repository, Teams repository uh, here, uh, that is called Team Library. So we have um, this Team Library that helps to reuse uh, assets relevant for journey mapping in different journeys and different documents. For instance, you can reuse stages, touch points, images and documents and channels. Just upload them once and for all and use them in different uh, projects and your team members will be able to access them as well. Uh, yeah, so I will add uh, those image from the team library right here and insert. Great. Another thing to keep in mind uh, is that customer journey map is a really big document usually. And it might be quite um, overwhelming to look at it all at once. At your expression, we have this feature called views that allows to split the big map into smaller chunks of AK views, and then share the specific view with the specific team and focus them on what they should work on. So let's create one view here. Uh, we add the view. Uh, let's add the view for our CX team, for example. And all you need to do is just hide those sections uh, here, unnecessary sections for CX team. And also you can hide unnecessary stages if you want them to focus on the several ones, for instance. It's also possible to um, uh, exclude some personas. If, for example, you want your team to focus on the customer persona, not the employee one, also possible to do. So we save the view and the map shrinks to more compact size. What you can do next, you can easily copy this um, link, URL link for the view uh, with your team members and uh, they will still be able to access this big um, initial map if they would like to check what it looks like. So yes, today throughout our session, we were talking about, um, about uh, mapping scenario, uh, mapping collaboration. But uh, as we promised uh, at the very beginning, we will not let you go without giving some uh, advice on the other side, ideation. Ideation sessions, as we mentioned, uh, are all about brainstorming and generating ideas. But how to come up with great ideas? Well, firstly, it's good to ditch the word great from there. Remember this double diamond concept that Lisa mentioned a little bit earlier? 
divergent and convergent thinking can help you a lot here. Firstly, just encourage your team members to dump all ideas uh, they have in their brain without assessing them. Either they're good, bad, stupid, and so on. If your team struggles with generating ideas, um, you might encourage them by giving them a specific number. For instance, try to generate 10 ideas per stage or try to generate 100 ideas overall. We have a checklist that we at your expression like to use for our ideation sessions. So take a look at these questions. Uh, yeah. Do you have at least one crazy idea among all of the ideas? A controversial one or the one that your competitors cannot easily copy? If the answer is no, well, then come up with one. After the session, it's quite common to have a list of poorly described ideas. And it's important to refine those. Uh, this is especially helpful uh, when uh, your you stop your ideation session for some time, you switch to other activities, and then you get back. And some of the team members might easily forget what they meant by this or that idea. So it's, it's good to have these refining uh, sessions as well. Also, it helps to come up with uh, more ideas while you're clarifying the existing ones. So take a look at the questions that might be helpful while refining those ideas. Uh, so, for example, uh, which problem does this specific idea solve, or how exactly does it solve the issue? What are the alternatives to, uh, to solve this problem, alternative ideas to solve this problem? And who is going to implement the solution? Uh, whose help you might need? And so on. Um, once you are done and everyone has a common understanding of what uh, each idea means, you can proceed with selecting the ideas that you want to implement further or you want to proceed with. And uh, dot voting actually might be really helpful in this case. At your expression, we have dot voting uh, functionality uh, in built in the platform. I will show you what it looks like right now. So uh, yes, we have the finished map, as I said, we scroll till the end where we have these ideas listed. So in order to collect your team members feedback, all you have to do is just simply switch to the commenting mode, reaction tab. And here we have those uh, dot voting option. So you can easily mark the ideas that you support and your team members as well. And also, if you want to share how do you feel about this or that idea, just mark uh, those reactions here like that. And this is also a good way to gather these um, uh, votes, this feedback from the team. So yeah, that is... Uh, pretty much uh, it for today's session. It brings me to the end uh, of it. So let's summarize what we talked about today. The scope of today's session, the, the main focus, one on the synchronous collaboration. We talked about two scenarios, mapping and ideation. We talked about the type of the session and uh, shared some concepts on how to facilitate them. We also uh, sp spoke about the group size and session scope and addressed some of the issues that might occur while you're collaborating synchronously. I really hope that the session was useful for you, that you will take something from this section for, uh, for your further collaboration uh, events, for your collaboration, I mean, collaboration uh, sessions. Um, and now I'm ready to pass the mic back to our host, Julian, so we can start questions and answers part. All right, uh, Julia, Lisa, thank you so much. Uh, we are indeed ready to move on to the Q&A at this point. 
And actually, just like uh, last time, uh, our colleague Jana is here. Jana is an anthropologist, org designer, and facilitator who has vast experience helping companies to implement joint mapping and human-centered approach as a consultant. So she definitely has lots of things to add. So Jana, would you mind joining us for the Q&A today? Yes, uh, thank you, Yulia. Sure, I will be happy to join. All right, awesome, Jana, thank you so much. Uh, so we have some questions coming in and actually we gathered some questions uh, before uh, the event today. So the first one is from Carly here. Um, how to organize voting for the best idea or strategy so that the groups, people whose ideas were not chosen, don't consider their time wasted. Do you have any tips on that? Uh, yes, actually, it's a very good question. Uh, it makes sense to set expectations in advance so that your team members know that the majority of ideas will not be chosen. And that's, that's okay, that's totally fine. Um, resources are limited, but the, the, most, the more ideas you have, um, you have to pick from uh, the better, the more chances that there will be some good ones, some uh, really worthy to proceed with. So just set those expectations uh, in your team to prevent discouragement. All right, awesome. Jana, do you have anything to add? Yes, the questions about facilitations. So one particular technique I find helpful is uh, using world cafe mechanics or technique for uh, such ideation sessions. What it means, it means that uh, first you have a round of uh, kind of coming up with ideas and then you switch groups and people need to contribute to, to develop someone else's ideas. And this way you do not have a list of like abandoned some someone's ab abandoned ideas but you uh, because every person basically contributed to everything and so this works very well when you need people to be engaged when you especially need people to be engaged and kind of feel this ownership sense of ownership of the end result so it might be a great way to work with that right yana Thank you so much. Uh, we have more questions coming in here. So the next one is, um, in some cases, there are active contributors to the discussions that share all their ideas without giving others time to pitch in. How to handle such situations? Lisa, Julia, Jana, do you have an answer to that? Um, I can start, I guess. Uh, that's what the facilitation is really for. Um, you know, in order for the conversation not to become an uncontrollable mess, uh, somebody needs to be in charge of, you know, um, checking in the time and passing the mic to somebody else if it needs to. And, you know, have that uh, opportunity for everybody to be able to speak up. Yana, do you have anybody, anything else that you would like to join, uh, to add to? <laughs> I, I think actually that the idea that you shared a bit earlier about those smaller group size is also a great way to do about that. Because uh, again, if you have only two people in the group, um, it is more obvious when one person is speaking and another is like silent. So it encourages people to kind of collaborate in more equal parts. Uh, as opposed to, for example, a group of four or five people where usually two active people contributing and the rest of them making notes, best scenario, they are taking notes and worst scenario, they're just like waiting when it all ends, which also happens, let's be honest. So yeah, I think smaller groups would really be a good way to go about it. Oh, awesome. and just another thought, I think when we worked with uh, like groups of senior managers where like everyone is important and everyone needs to share an opinion about something, we also used like um, timers, like those sand um, 
clocks uh, and just made it very visible that everyone has, for example, half of the minute or minute. And it's not just like, you know, electronic uh, time, time timer, but it's like very, very tangible thing. And everyone saw uh, that what time they have and what time has passed. And it also encouraged them to kind of like, you know, distribute it wisely. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, and I hope that answers your question. So the next one is from Mohori here. And is there a template we could use for a retail experience considering layout customer flow? Uh, yes, uh, I did share the link in the chat where Express should definitely have those. Uh, so check it out, the link is right there. So hopefully you will find something that suits you. Another one from uh, Darren here. Have you had a situation where the group are really keen on selecting one idea, but you as a facilitator can see it's flawed? How did you deal with that? Jana, did you have such an experience in your practice maybe? Sure, many times. Uh, well, the challenge is that uh, it's, a, it's actually a conflict, an inherent conflict of those roles. As for example, facilitator, you are supposed to be neutral and you're supposed to trust the group and kind of like this concept of group wisdom that they can select the best idea. But as, for example, initiative lead, you might have opinions, right? And, um, and it's really, it's a tough spot to be in because uh, it also depends on the place from which you are speaking to the group. For example, if you're uh, external uh, consultant, as I was some times ago, uh, it, you might have a bit more room to, for example, challenge people's ideas, kind of ask them some questions, leading questions that, um, have you thought about this and have you considered that? And what if I give you advice to consider it wise, for example, you have that room. But if you're um, a colleague, if you work in the same company, well, it is a tough spot to be in. And again, you can try those questions. For example, if you think uh, there is probably a reason why you see uh, flaws in these ideas, why you think it's not the best idea. So uh, you need to very quickly understand, like reflect on what are the reasons and then try to see that to the to people, but not as a ready answer, but as a line of kind of as a logic. So you need to come up with right questions. For example, um, say, can we talk about costs of this solution? Or do you think we could scale it uh, if we apply this idea? Do you think we could scale it further? Or uh, do you think it will be easy to get managers buy in for this idea? and stuff like that. And if the group insists, then I think it sometimes long-term, it's a better solution to give them the right for this mistake. Uh, if your organizational culture allows it, I think it should allow it. It is better for people to go, kind of to go through this uh, together to get to the same realization, but do it themselves, because this way next time, maybe they will be listening to your questions like more attentively. Maybe they will be thinking through those risks uh, themselves, even without the facilitator. But um, I do not believe in telling, in facilitators role, I mean, in telling people like, okay, I think this idea is not very good. Let's think twice, so, because that, that rarely works and it kills the engagement in the team. So that's my five cents on this. Jana, thank you for sharing your experience with that. Darren, I hope that helps. Let us know, please, in the chat. We have another question. Yep, thanks, Jana. That's a brilliant answer, <laughs> Darren here says. And we have another question from Constanza here. How can we optimize our role as facilitators if we should also participate due to our knowledge? Lisa, I would say you? once again, very tricky part and very tricky to, you know, whatever hat you're putting on. Once again, you should be uh, kind of neutral if you're in a role of a facilitator. 
but uh, you can also identify yourself from time to time as a as a person who has the knowledge and being able to contribute and later on give everybody the opportunity to discuss this idea and ideate upon it. Maybe uh, your idea is just a starting point and then your team is going to be able to come up with something even better and crazier. So you never know if that answers. <laughs> Great, Lisa, thank you. Anyone I else? Yeah, I just uh, remembered a brilliant uh, th kind of idea I saw uh, from one facilitator. She's from Ukraine, actually. She's like really one of the best facilitators I know. And uh, when she participated uh, some session in two roles as an expert and as a, let's say, trainer or facilitator, uh, she was having this like crown, toy crown, but it could be anything, any like like flower brush or something like any attribute, uh, a scarf maybe. And she just said, so like when I am in this expert role, I will put the crown on. And when it's off, I am a facilitator. And uh, this is just like a cue for the audience to understand from which position I'm speaking right now. And I'm not sure what could be an analog for this in digital setting, maybe some, I didn't, well, I mean, if it's video, we also could use some kind of hat or something. So this is my expert hat and this is my facilitator hat. But um, I think it's like an idea to play with. So it could be some creative way how to let you out just like peer one of them. And when you kind of stand out from the group and have a little bit different role. And also another thing is always try to articulate it really well. So like just say that, that in this role, I will do this. And in this role, I will do only this and this. And when I'm an expert, I can share an opinion. But when I, I'm kind of guiding you, I will not express my own opinions about the matter, something like that. Great, thank you so much. Constanza here says, fun idea, thanks. And I hope it will be useful for your next project. If you want to see more events like this, make sure to check the upcoming ones at expression.eventbrite.com or check the recordings we've got on this channel. Take care and I will see you around.